Now I will explain the procedure by viewing the video of surgery performed. This is a 63-year-old female patient. These are photos of the frontal view and upper jaw prior to the surgery. Tooth was extracted from this mandibular area and implant will be placed. If you see here, number 5 was just placed an implant was placed immediately after tooth extraction for number 6. Number 5 has no offset, while number 6 has 10.5. Tooth is extracted and guide is inserted to check the offset. I check number 45 and number 46 offsets. This is the process of extracting the tooth and inserting the guide. This tooth in the bridge needs to be extracted. When extracting the tooth, it is important not to damage the tissues around the tooth extraction socket. Therefore, extracting the tooth without damaging the tissues around the tooth extraction socket as much as possible by using elevator is one of the factors that would ensure that immediate placement after extraction will be successful. It is advisable to ensure that bone does not flex and to retain the gum as much as possible. When all of these are removed, inflammation becomes visible. Inflammation will be curated. If you examine the curette closely, it is shaped like a saw-toothed wheel. It is very helpful in scraping out the inflammation tissues. It performs much better than simply rounded curettes. Wash off with saline and check once again. Check whether it is clean, clean, and remove the remaining inflammation tissues. Check whether there are remaining inflammation tissues and perhaps the process of this curetting could take the longest time in the immediate placement after extraction case. Extract the tooth and check whether the guide matches well by inserting the guide. Then, open the doxycycline capsule of the tooth extraction socket. After having wetted disinfected cotton with saline, Wet it again with doxycycline and insert it into the tooth extraction socket.
Since I wasn't able to take photo of insertion of doxycycline into this patient, I took photo of another patient for the insertion of doxycycline. Now, wait until the time for surgery. Remove doxycycline immediately before the start of the surgery. Occasionally, when you put the doxycycline cotton balls in by rolling up smaller cotton balls, make sure to count the number of cottons to ensure that every cotton balls that have been placed in are definitely removed. Otherwise, doxycycline cotton remaining in the cavity can become a major problem. Accordingly, it is advisable to use a single large cotton ball as much as possible. Take doxycycline cotton out and insert the guide again to check whether it has been put in its proper place. Then begin implant surgery now. 4.0 by 11.5 implant will be placed for number 45 after having performed tissue punching rather than immediate placement after extraction since it is a simple guided surgery. I am punching the tissue now. Execute bone flattening drill to the bottom line since the offset is 9.0 millimeters. In the case of simple guide implant surgery like this, you can use 2.0 by 5 drill that makes contact with sleeve without having to use the drill tube. Even if you use this, it is possible to place implants accurately if you keep the direction correct. It is 2.0 by 5 drill for which the drill can come in contact with the sleeve. This is 2.7 by 5 drill. In addition, bone that is drilled out with this drill can be gathered and used in immediate placement after extraction later. This is 2.7 by 8.5 drill. And this is 2.7 by 11.5 drill. Irrigate the drilled socket sufficiently to wash out the bone chips in the drill socket. Irrigation has dual functions of washing out the bone chips and cooling the area inside the socket to prevent bone heating. Execute profile drill at the speed of 100 RPM. More bone will be drilled out if profile drill is performed. Gather this and use it at the time of bone transplant. Use 3.0 by 8.5 and 3.0 by 11.5 drills. The most important issue is to always start drilling once the drill comes in contact with a bone at the depth of the drilling in the previous stage. After cooling, use Profile Drill for the 3.2 final drill. Bone chip will also be produced in this procedure. After having performed 3.2 by 10 drilling, final drilling will be carried out. Perform final drilling. Four point zero by eleven point five implant will now be placed. Turn UV on. 
Irradiate UV for 20 seconds. UV irradiation is completed. Once it is completed, take the implant out and place it. It is 4.0 by 11.5. Put the UV treated implant in at the speed of 25 RPM. When I am placing the implant, I use machine up to the mid length of the implant, but make sure to do wrenching with hand for the remaining length. This enables me to accurately assess whether I have reached the bottom of the drill hole I made. Since the offset is 9, I will place it up to the black line at the bottom. Being able to take it out this well implies that it has been placed by having drilled accurately. Abutment profile drill was used last to ensure that abutment is properly mounted. Then I will perform immediate placement after extraction for number 46. Insert the drill tube and drill vertically by using 2.0 by 7 drill. It can be deemed that the drill does not go in much since the tooth extraction socket is deep. The next is 8.5. Press lightly and if it does not go in, drill up to 8.5 before drilling with 2.0 by 11.5 drill. If it is not possible to enter up to 2.0 by 11 because the mouth does not open well, then there is no particular need to do up to 2.0 by 11.5. You simply have to adjust the length properly with 2.7 drill. I am using the drill. It is 2.7 by 8.5. It is 2.7 by 11.5. Then I use 2.7 by 13 drill. You must drill by ensuring that the drill is inserted to the depth of the previous drilling. Then, 3.0 drill needs to be used next. However, There is no need to use profile drill since it is tooth extraction socket. Therefore, I used 3.0 by 10 drill. Then I used 11.5 drill. Followed by 3.0 by 13 drill. Now, use the 3.2 profile drill by putting even the offset. It is 3.0 by 10. It is 3.0 by 13 drill. 13 drill is used.
Now it is 4.3 profile drill. It is the final drill. Execute 4.3 drill sequentially. You must remember that before you start drilling in each step, you must make sure that the drill is inserted all the way in to the depth of the previous hole before starting the engine. This will ensure highly accurate drilling. I completed up to the final drill. Then the guide will be taken out and bone will be transplanted. Mix the bone before and the autologous bone collected during drilling. And put it into the tooth extraction socket. Put sufficient bone into the tooth extraction socket. Put the bone in to ensure that there is no inadequate bone before inserting the guide. And perform final drilling again to make hole for the insertion of the implant. Perform drilling with 4.3 by 11.5 final drill to ensure easy insertion by drilling the previously drilled location accurately. Irradiate UV onto the implant again. UV irradiation is completed. Make a hole for the insertion of implant. And 5.0 by 11.5 implant needs to be inserted vertically in reference to the guide. Since it is a molar tooth, it is not possible to insert vertically as the handpiece touches the upper jaw. In such case, take the handpiece out and insert it slightly in vertical direction with hand. This will enable it to be inserted easily due to the depth of the tooth extraction socket. After inserting, place the implant by wrenching it to ensure that the bone remaining in the tooth extraction socket is engaged lastly with a wrench. Since the wrench is caught by the guide because it is too short, implant is being placed by inserting a stent. Since there is an offset, implant needs to be placed to the top portion of the offset. Implant is placed accurately by considering an offset. After placing, take the sleeve out. Being able to take it out this well implies that it had been placed accurately in proper direction. If the direction is deviated, there is a tendency of having difficulty in taking the connector out. However, there is no major difference. Then check whether bone particles have entered into the placed implant. Ensure that bone chip does not enter the implant through direct suction tip and confirm whether there is sufficient bone in the outer boundaries of the implant. Therefore, it was decided to mount bone forming screw since the cavity is large. Mount the PRF made onto the bone forming screw.
Then the bone forming screw and PRF over there will cover the soft tissue. Check whether inside the implant is visible through accurate suction and then mount inside the implant. Since the drill is too long, I change with a shorter one. Mounting is being done well. Check whether the initial fixation is achieved properly. There is sufficient initial fixation. Then, Mount healing abutment onto number 45 to ensure PRF is inserted between the soft tissue and the bone forming screw and suture number 46. I'm going to suture after tucking in the PRF under the gum. Since all the bone particles inside will be leaked out if the gum opens up, perform suture in the manner that prevents such opening of gum. It is a triangle suture by stitching on the opposite side on one side. I believe this triangle suture is highly efficient in suturing the relevant area after placing immediate placement after extraction. It is a highly effective and more useful suture method in gathering the gum than individual suture. Check presence of gaping gum and perform more sutures if necessary. Since it is suture that contains simply the tooth extraction socket rather than by performing additional incision, there is no problem that can be anticipated as you only need to perform suture in as-is condition. Healing abutment is put in the front and bone forming screw is put in number 6 with suture performed. It is number 5 prior to the procedure and number 5 after the procedure. It is number 6 prior to the procedure and number 6 after the procedure. This is a photo after the procedure with completed bone implant in the tooth extraction socket side. Thank you. Let me remind you of the procedure. Shh, in short, in the procedure, the first drill is a, a tissue punch. After tissue punch, implant osteotomy is prepared up to one millimeter short of the sinus floor. After that, the remaining bone is 
eliminated with the sinusterial. And then membrane is elevated by injecting a small amount of water into the sinus and then pulling out the water you injected to test the membrane integrity. After testing the membrane integrity, a sinus graft material is inserted into the sinus and then an implant is placed into the sinus. After the procedure, you can get this shape of bone graft material in the sinus cavity. You can get this dome shape of bone formation in the sinus.